A new official trailer for The Suicide Squad has been released, and we get an extended look at the main characters, the film's plot, and all of the high stakes action that we can expect from James Gunn's latest film. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down what we saw, explaining the things you missed, alongside giving you my general reaction. I will also leave a link in the description to the new Suicide Squad trailer if you haven't seen it already. But if you want to see any of my future content on upcoming films in the DCEU, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into my breakdown and thoughts of the new trailer for The Suicide Squad. So the new trailer for The Suicide Squad has now arrived and it offers a more complete picture of what James Gunn is giving us with his 2021 relaunch of the villainous team. We get dazzling shots of the mayhem unfolding on the island's Corto Maltese, but the opening seconds start to share some weird parallels to the previous Suicide Squad movie. We are introduced to Idris Elba's Robert Dubois, who is Bloodsport, and he is in Bell Reef Prison for putting Superman in the ICU using a kryptonite bullet. Alongside this shocking reveal, we get shots of him connecting to his daughter, who reveals that she has a court case coming up, and that Amanda Waller is the only one who can help her. Like Deadshot in the first Suicide Squad movie, we get a father-daughter bond, but it does look like they're building on this a bit more this time around, and hopefully, as the trailer suggests, it will be a good piece of character motivation. But Amanda Waller threatens Bloodsport's daughter, and after holding a knife to her throat, she says to him that she wouldn't take more extreme measures if this mission weren't as important as it was. So already we've got good character motivation and a potential threat that needs to be addressed. In come the Suicide Squad and we start to meet other members of the team. Like in the first film, they are all chosen for their individual unique abilities and once on the chopper that is heading to the island, we get a good mix of comedy to show the chemistry that is building between them. Pete Davingson's Blackguard gets spooked by Sean Gunn's Weasel when Rick Flagg reveals that the character previously killed 27 children. I can see James Gunn making Weasel the Groot of this movie, but of course in a more twisted way, like we see in this new footage. But after some brief bonding, they arrive at Waller's classroom and she briefs them on the mission, stating that their purpose is to destroy every trace of something known as Project Starfish. We have of course seen Starro in the previous trailers, and the character in the comics is a mind-controlling intergalactic starfish and leader of the Star Conquerors, a race of alien starfish. The character is an intimidating, hulking monster that has been a threat to Earth, as it has tried to conquer it on multiple occasions, often acting as a planetary threat to the Justice League. We see brief shots later of Starro launching King Shark into a building, and it's going to be interesting to see how they incorporate the character's threat into this storyline and beyond. Starro also creates tiny duplicates of himself that can latch onto human hosts and then control their minds, with the main starfish having all kinds of powers as well, and the trailer gives us a very brief look at this too. So you can imagine how out of their depths the Suicide Squad will be against him. What also follows the briefing scene is what was expected, with many shots of all the Suicide Squad using their abilities. The trailer features a handful of new scenes from the squad's time in Corto Maltese, where they've been sent to destroy a dangerous weapon, Waller doesn't want to fall into the wrong hands. In addition to Bloodsport's sharpshooting, Polkadot Man's dot shooting, and King Shark's mauling people, the new trailer also gives a better look at one of Harley Quinn's more whimsical fight sequences, which reads visually more like a fantasy than reality. This is really what stood out for me, as the trailer does give off the impression that a non-insignificant amount of its sense of humour is less twisted and more straight-up silly. 
It will be interesting to see if the Suicide Squad's investment in dick and butt jokes ends up complementing its moments of gore and mayhem, but I guess James Gunn is going for a mix of a lot of things, especially considering the types of characters that are all in this one film. Speaking of James Gunn, it's also interesting to note that the director and his previous film, Guardians of the Galaxy, is used as an on-screen title, so if you're looking for a small Marvel DC crossover wink, then this was kinda cool to see. Also, as I said in my Dawn of the Dead video a few weeks ago, this marks the first film that James Gunn and Zack Snyder both have a joint role on since their classic zombie film. Zack Snyder's name appears in the credits as an executive producer, and although he probably had nothing to do with the story, it's cool to see them both mentioned on the same project once again. There are other shots in the trailer of Bloodsport trying to escort Ratcatcher, and her noting what she said in previous trailers, that she will help them get out alive. So it looks like this is one of the things that is being left for the movie to reveal. Alongside this, we get some more thrilling action shots of Harley Quinn fighting and the team avoiding destroyed buildings from what we presume is Starro's damage. A lot of this trailer was action shots, but the introduction and mix of tone has me excited to check it out come August, where we will have a better picture of how all of these sequences connect to the central plot. And we can't forget, as this trailer reminds us, that many of the characters will probably die in this fight, which is what we should expect when they come up against Starro. But that was my brief breakdown of the new official trailer for The Suicide Squad. I thought this new footage was really exciting and confusing at the same time. When I say confusing, I'm referring to the mix of tone that is on display when we have examples of terrible things that the characters have done. I trust that James Gunn will make this comical, but also have moments of darkness, especially if we keep that opening sequence with Bloodsport in mind, but the action looks great as we expected, and I'm interested to see how Gunn tackles the character building and makes this a plot so This is more than just defeating a bad guy. I'm worried that this will be the case, but as long as the characters get good service, then I think this has the potential to be a great Suicide Squad film. But overall, I did enjoy this trailer, and for me, it's the best one yet, offering a variety of fans different things that they can get on board with. The first Suicide Squad film had an amazing marketing campaign, and that turned out to be really disappointing, so I'm hoping that this one can capitalise on some decent footage and promotion. We'll have to see if it delivers when it releases in a few months, but the latest footage does give us a solid tease of what's to come. Let me know down below what you thought of this new trailer for James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, alongside your predictions on who will die in the movie. For more videos on The Suicide Squad, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.